Welcome to your weekly UAV news update. I'm Greg River Doo Doo Doo, and today we crashed not one, but two drones. Bobby, are you using my office oh. again? Damn it, Bobby. All right, welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of October 18, 2021. This is the place where you get your news not two weeks late. We get four stories this week. Quite frankly, the first one is very disturbing. I've been reading quite a bit about this and I don't like it. Uh, the FCC is talking about going after DJI. We'll talk about the possible implications here. Um, the next thing is a flight, a UAS that flew for more than eight days, breaking a world record. We'll talk about that. It's pretty cool. We'll talk about a company called Ag Eagle, which is not a small company, that is buying SenseFly from Parrot. And then lastly, we'll talk about AZ Drone Fest, which is where we're going to be this weekend, and I uh, hope to meet you guys there. We'll talk about a new course as well that we just put out uh, in the last couple of days. So let's get to it. <music> Okay, the first story this week is something that uh, comes from the FCC commissioner, and um, I, I don't even know where to get started with this. This is a story that's been unfolding for a long time now. The FCC has never been involved with this story, but the FAA and uh, the government in general, not the FAA, just the government in general, has been involved with this. And there's been a DJI ban for government use. We know this, if you've been watching me for a long time, you know this. This has been going on for almost the past two years. And, uh, and we've been somewhat critical of this for several reasons, not because we want to defend a Chinese manufacturer last thing on our mind, but uh, because we don't think there is a fair side of the government on this. And, and, and quite frankly, this gets even deeper now because the commissioner, the FCC commissioner, is now talking about um, possibly not approving DJI drones at the FCC level. You know, every device that's out there that uses the airwaves has to be approved by the FCC. And the FCC is now talking about not covering entities that are on the covered list, the covered list being this black list that DJI was put on last year. And there's a quote from the document that we're going to link to down at the bottom. The FCC, this is a quote, the FCC also has a proceeding underway examining whether to continue approving equipment from entities on the covered list, okay, for use in the United States, regardless of whether federal dollars are involved. And this is a big deal. Regardless of federal dollars are involved, this means that potentially, if I'm reading this correctly, that um, the FCC could basically say no to DJI drones, future DJI drones. Now, the question I have is, can they say no to previous DJI drones? Can they basically take away FCC approval that they've provided to existing drones and say, well, no, we are taking this away and now you can't fly your drone. If your drone no longer is FCC approved, technically you can't fly. Now, I don't want to start a, a, a false rumor or anything. This is information that's available right here in the government document. And, um, and, and they're essentially saying that the, uh, the DJI poses a, an acceptable security risk. And I'll, I'll give my argument again that I've given for the last two years. Where's the proof? We keep being told that this is not safe. And, um, and at the end of the day, there's still no concrete proof that whatever they're saying is actually happening. So anyway, I, I feel, I think this is disturbing. This is disturbing in a sense because, well, if, uh, if the FCC wanted to play this game, they could essentially turn your DJI drone into a brick. And not only that, but can they turn any other drones into a brick because they decide, well, because that's what they want to do. So uh, with 70 plus percent of the industry at the moment flying DJI drones, what are the alternatives? There are no alternatives. Imagine if you're flying your drone and uh, the next day you can't. This is your this is your way of making money, of feeding your family and, and paying your bills. And all of a sudden you can't do it because, well, because the FCC commissioner decided that that's what he wants to do. So I find this extremely disturbing and, uh, and, and we'll definitely give you more information as this comes around. But uh, please, please let me know in the comments what you think about this development. Next thing, something a little bit more positive, uh, this company called Val Vanilla UAV, it's a vanilla spelled out kind of funny, uh, they claim the world record for a drone flight, eight days and 50 minutes without refueling, uh, you guessed it, this is not something done with, uh, with batteries, this is done with fuel, 
But over eight days, they flew 10,600 nautical miles before landing. They actually did kind of a loop pattern around a certain area. This was not uh, beyond visual line of sight. Now, this is a fixed-wing aircraft designed primarily for the military. Uh, it's not a small unmanned aircraft, small under 55 pounds. This is considered a Group 3 category, which is between 25 and 600 kilograms. So 600 kilograms is uh, fairly large, in this case about... Uh, so 18 to, to about 2,000 pounds roughly and uh, no I'm sorry doing my math wrong uh, 600 is about 1,200 pounds 1,200 to 1,400 pounds and uh, it looks like this has a, a payload of about 150 pounds so uh, quite a big machine kind of interesting uh, to see this technology out there the next thing is Ag Eagle. Ag Eagle is a company, Ag Eagle uh, Aerial Systems, that is purchasing SenseFly, and they're buying it from Parrot. Parrot, the company, the French company, uh, owns this uh, SenseFly company. And SenseFly is known for doing fixed-wing aircraft. You probably have seen it, the EB. It's this little red aircraft that is taking off and, and doing its thing, uh, collecting data, mostly for mapping. And Parrot said that they're selling this because they want to concentrate primarily on the quadcopter, multi-rotor uh, type of aircraft. So they said that the money that they're raising for this is going to help growing their professional quadcopter equipment and, uh, and also doing more data analysis. They're partnering with Pix4D, amongst other ones, to do 3D mapping, surveying, uh, inspections, agriculture, and you name it. So um, that's uh, an interesting uh, change right here. Okay, last thing this week is uh, AZ Drone Fest, and this is coming up this weekend on Saturday. We're going to be at Grand Canyon University in, uh, in Phoenix, and you can come in and see us. You can come to the booth. We'll have a booth. I'm doing a talk at 10 a.m. talking about regulation. Uh, you can meet the team. You can get your registration sticker printed for free. Uh, you can also fly. We'll have a drone sim out there, so we're kind of excited. This, this should be a fun event. The general admission is free. We also have tickets left uh, for free that we can give you if you want to go to the paid side of things. So we have several tickets available. Make sure that you email us, contact at pilotinstitute.com if you're in the area and you want to get one of those tickets. I know we've given quite a few already, but I think there are some left. And uh, hopefully we see you there. And um, I'm pretty excited about this. One more thing before we go, we have a brand new course. This is a deep dive course on the uh, Parrot aircraft. So uh, slightly different company. We've, uh, we haven't done Parrot aircraft before in deep dive. You can go see what that looks like. This is the Parrot Thermal, uh, Parrot Anafi Thermal. And then we also put out two videos earlier this week. Make sure you go and check those out. They're pretty cool. The first one is mandatory and optional reports from the FAA, the NTSB, and NASA. There is always a bit of a confusion as to what needs to be reported, when, what is it under Part 107, what is it under recreational rules. So we made a video that kind of explains all of that. And then the last one is a maneuvers video that we did. It's 15 basic maneuvers. If you're brand new to flying your drone, and I know a lot of you that are watching this are fresh out of uh, buying your first drone, these are the maneuvers that you can do to get better at flying. And we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, we've had 50 maneuvers in the course for quite a while, and we uh, created 50 new, uh, somewhat new maneuvers that you can do in practice to get started. Uh, five of these are actually cinematic maneuvers that uh, help you get, well, better footage. So that's it. That's all I have. Make sure you leave your comments down there. I know uh, you've been really busy at leaving comments, and we always appreciate that. Um, if you're not subscribed, please uh, go ahead and do that. We're getting close to 30,000 subscribers, so uh, any number helps. It helps us be more visible to other people and uh, spread the word and spread the free education, uh, which is what we do here in this channel. So that's all I have. I'll see you guys next week.